Jesus hold my hand. Then I learned how to be thankful for everything that He's done for me. That's right. It's a thing. We can say it and we can say, oh, I thank you, thank you, thank you. No. You have to really be thankful. Believe me, I am really thankful for where He brought me from. It's a thing. But as long as He holds my hand and He guides me, without the help of God and Him guiding me and holding my hand, I will fall. As a thing, but you got to be willing to let him guide you. I'm going to turn it over to the preacher. You know, the Lord is our refuge. He said, I'm a present help in the time of need. Want to say, 
Once again, it's wonderful to have everybody here this morning that is here. I hope that everybody that I preach to this morning will be in heaven. I hope everybody that I preach to will listen to what the Word says and want to go to heaven. Going to the book of Joshua, the seventh chapter of this morning, I want to ask you a question. In my sermon this morning, I will ask you, where did you hide? You're going to say, well, you're crazy, Brother Walls, to ask me such a question. But when I'm through preaching, I want you to know you're going to know where you hit it at. Praise the Lord. Let us read from verse 19. <clears throat> this is talking about Joshua, about Achan's. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel. And make confessions unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done, uh, hit, had it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua, and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. <clears throat> and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoilers of goodly, Babylon garment and two shackles of silver and a wedge of gold and and five fifty wedges of shackles of wedge. When I when I coveted them and took them and behold the let me get back and and uh, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver is under them and Joshua sent messengers they ran into the tent and behold it was hid in his tent and the silver under it and they took them out they took them out of the midst of the tent brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and let them out before, laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua said, and Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan and his son, uh, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the gold and the garments and the wedges of gold, and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them uh, into the valley of Acorn. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord saw, the Lord, the Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all of Israel stoned them with stones, and burnt them with fire, uh, after they had stoned them with stones. I want you to, I want to ask you a question this morning. Before I, before I begin, I'm going to ask you the same question again. Where did you hit it? What did you do with it? Now I know you, you say, but well, all that sounds crazy to me. Wait till I'm done, then we'll, we'll see about it. The Bible said the eye of the Lord is ever worse. Beholding good and evil. Numbers 32, 23 said, the latter part of that verse said, be sure you sin, we'll find you out. He said, there is nothing hid that shall not be revealed. That which is hid in darkness will be revealed in light. That which is, hallelujah, that's preached in secret will be preached from the housetop. All of these are the things that you and I are looking at today. Atkins had taken what the Lord had told them not to. He said, now you go down there, you take, you take them, you leave everything out there. Don't you bring any of those spoils. You leave it all out there. There always has to be one that has covets the things that the 
the world of uh, the world, and God says, "Leave it alone. Amen. Leave it alone." Where? Hallelujah! But people take it in their heart and in their mind and in their homes and in their life, and when they take it, they begin to well say, "Look what I've got." If the Bible said that we gain the whole world and lose our soul, what will we give it in chance? What if everybody here, if every one of you become rich this day, every one of you become very filthy rich. You had everything that everybody could uh, uh, offer you and give to you. You had all the money. Uh, you couldn't even haul it home. You'd have to make several trips to get it. But if you uh, I don't know what you've done with it, uh, hallelujah, and how you got it, and you don't, don't respect God with it, you're in trouble. Amen. You're in trouble. Akins, they told you not to take anything. See, hallelujah, Joshua said, the Lord said, go down there, take the city, take everything, take the nation, take the country, but don't you bring one spoil back from there. You leave it all down there. Did you know that there is so many people that wants to take part of the world in everything to do? God's people don't belong to the world. God's people have no, have no business with the world. Jesus said, I was in the world. I was out of the world, but I, hallelujah, I, I, I was in the world, and I created the world, but I wasn't of the world. God don't want us to be of the world. He wants us to be. He said, I created in you a new heart and the right kind of a spirit. That's what David prayed for. Created me, uh, hallelujah, and uh, of the right uh, spirit. Give me a new heart. Created me the right spirit. The Bible said, touch not, taste not. Hallelujah. We ain't supposed to take on the things of the world and the things of the devil. But what people want to do, now I want you to notice something. I want to get this thought to you. It didn't just hurt Akins. Akins went there, took the battle garment, took the silver, took the gold. There was a whole lot of, a whole lot of money involved, a whole lot of a big price involved in this work. You'll just look up at how much all this was uh, run and, and figure out how much it was. And read the, the footnotes in your your Bible, you'll find out that this was worth a whole lot. Praise the Lord. But it was wasn't worth taking him Akins. Not only did he take him, but they took his wife, his children. They took his animals, they took everything that he had, and they took it and they stoned it to death and then burned it. Was it worth giving your whole family for? Uh, is, is what you do, is if you tangle yourself up in the world, is it worth the, what, the, what it cost? Is it worth giving up all, everybody you got and everybody you love and everybody that's surrounding you, your children, your wife, your children, and everybody uh, getting them entangled in? I, I, I want to tell you something. I remember one time I, I was confronted with a, a man running around uh, uh, on his wife. And all the woman was running around on her other. But this other man was running around uh, on his wife. They happened to be in my church where I was pastor. When I called that, when I called them, uh, the man did not said, no, 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 no I, I'm not been going with that woman. Hallelujah. I haven't been going with her. I hope that nobody's listening on the on the news when I tell this. Uh, hallelujah. I hope they don't hear this. But the, listen to what I'm saying. But the man said, no, I'm not guilty. Hallelujah. Well, they, they, they made a big issue out of it. The man was playing music in my church, and I told him to get his music, music instruments and get them out of the church because I had the dead proof on them. He said, would you do me that way? If you sin and I catch you at it, I'll call your hand. Don't you worry about that. Hallelujah. And the man took his instrument. I said, now if you're not guilty, you're telling me you're not guilty. If you're not guilty, don't you don't have to move your music instruments. But if you're guilty, you get them out of here because you're not going to sit and play in my church with sin running with somebody else's wife in the church. You see, 
I had received death threats from this man for several several weeks. He, every Tuesday I'd receive a letter telling me they were going to kill me. Well, uh, but, but let, let me go back and tell you the story. I confronted the woman. And the woman now said, yes, 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 we're guilty. Yes, we're guilty. Hallelujah. Yes, it's been going on. Well, you see, now, now, now that, that she came clean, but the man swore over and over and over, no, it's not me that's on that tape. See, what are you trying to say, Brother Walt? I'm trying to say Aiken hid it in his tent, but he come clean and said, yes, it's there, but he had sinned, and he was stoned just like the rest of them. Sin is sin, regardless of where you accept it, or whether you reject it, or whatever you do, sin is sin, white is white, and black is black, and when you mix them together, they won't come out white, and they won't come out black, but they'll come out dirty. The blood of Jesus Christ covers the sins. You're not going to get by without giving an account. Give an account. Hallelujah. You see, Achan, you profess to me and you tell me the truth. Joshua said. Yes, I've got it hid in my tent. Go down there in the middle of my tent. You see, there's, there's people that have all kinds of things hid in their life. But let me tell you what's going to happen to them things that are hid in your life. The Bible said, hallelujah, that that which is done in darkness is going to be come to the light. When you stand before God and that thing that you've done that you've hid all these years, the whole world's going to see it. Would that not be embarrassing? Think about it. That, hallelujah, God is going to stand. Everybody is going to give an account. Many and many of people are going to go to their graves saying, I didn't do it when they know they did. Why don't you confess to God? Why don't you, why don't you come before God? Hallelujah. Oh, but brother, oh, somebody wouldn't like me. God, hallelujah, God's going to stand you in judgment. Everybody's going to say, why don't you get rid of it while you're here? Hallelujah, why don't you repent of it? Why don't you put it under the blood? Don't take it to the grave. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, I'm gonna, I want to tell you all something. I've never, I've never seen this ignorant world and we're living it right now. They talk to you as if heaven was a, just something thought of, <coughs> that there ain't no hell and there ain't no heaven and whatever they do, it's all right. I'm going to tell you something. Heaven is a reality. Amen. Hell is a reality. Judgment is a reality. God, hallelujah, if God ain't done enough for you to know that, I'm, that God is real and He hasn't helped you enough to know that God is real, you need to pray through. You need to look in and see what God has done. Amen. You know why you're living this morning? You know why you're sitting in this church this morning? Hallelujah, because God loved you Amen. and sent you here. Called you out of a world of sin. Sent you to church to bless you and to anoint you and to give you life everlasting. Hallelujah, and that more abundantly. But what we do, we turn our heads and we act like, well, I'm just living on my own. I do what I want to do. I'm smart and I know how to live, how I want to live. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. How you want to live and how God wants you to live, they're two different things. Amen. Hallelujah. We got people that want to live like they want to live. Uh, you know, you know, there was a, uh, a, a man that said, oh no, there, there is no God. I don't believe in God. I don't believe that there's any such thing as God. When I was a child, this man lived down the road about a uh, half a mile from our house one day 
the Methodist preacher, and my daddy went to his house, and they went over there, and this man had said, there ain't no God. But he'd come ready to die, so he sent for my dad, and, and he called this, or got this preacher, uh, and they went over there to this man's house. And the man, they went over there, and they talked to him about the Lord, and he said, well, uh, no, I, he said, I've always said there wasn't a, a, a God, but I, I'm sort of believing there is. And they began to pray with him. As a child, I heard that man. We heard him screaming. My mother and my, hallelujah, my sisters and brothers, they heard this man screaming, pull me out of the fire of burning. Finally, they told after about three or four hours, the man looked at my dad and this preacher and said, it's no use. Thank you for coming. But my feet's already in hell and I'm dying. Why? He had it all hid. He didn't want to put it out in the open. He didn't want nobody to know what was going on. You ain't got it hid. God knows right where you're at. But God didn't deal with me. Wait just a minute. The Bible says, hallelujah, Titus said uh, in that uh, uh, third chapter, he said, the grace of God that brings us salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worded us that we should live sober and righteous in this present world. Hallelujah, where have you hit it? What did you do with it? Why, oh, but brother Walsh, hallelujah, I'll get it whenever that it come time to die, I'll around with it before the Lord. I'd hate to think. I'd hate to think that I lived in a such a way that I come down to the last minute and then I come running to God and said, God, forgive me for what I've done. I've lived for the devil the rest of my life. Now you take me to heaven. I don't know about that, folks. I wouldn't put too much stock in some of these things. Hallelujah. Because somebody said, oh, God. Hallelujah. I, I want you to know something. I put my life in God's hands and I know where I put it at. And I wouldn't say, well, where is my salvation? Hallelujah. I wouldn't say, I've got it hid in the center of my, in my tent. And I, hallelujah. And take me and my whole family and send them to hell because of it. You don't have to. God loves you today. And God will forgive you today. And God will recognize your repentance to Him today. What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Are you going to have a tomorrow? Think about it. Are you really going to have a tomorrow? Nobody knows. Think about it. Hallelujah. But Brother Walls, are you really going to have a tomorrow? Or is tomorrow going to be lighted down? Is your life going to be gone? Today's the day of salvation. Amen. Today's the day that you can repent. You've got a you've got a good mind. Tomorrow you may not have a mind. But but Walt, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live a long time. Just a woman's husband. They live that's where we live at now. He come into the house. Got him a glass of water. Walked outside. She was getting supper ready. He walked out, went down the steps and walked out in the backyard and died. Just like that. He was one of them that was ready to meet God. He loved God. He lived for God. Hey, I'm going to tell you all something. If I've ever seen a time in my life that people are playing with God. He's like a yo-yo. <laughs> They're playing with God like God. Hallelujah, like they had a million years to live. You ain't got a million years to live. Live today for God. For tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. What about Brother Mitchell? Call Sister Wilma, call the phone and this woman answered the phone. She said, you're all getting to the road. She said, no. 
you, you, you hang on. I'm going to tell you something. I'm running out of breath. I'm laying in the floor. I'm out of breath. And Amos is on his way to pick me up. Hallelujah. I, and said, if we won't, I just want you all to pray for me. Say, oh, but hallelujah. Uh, nobody, hey, how quick could it be? His blood pressure down 40 and below. Got plumped down where they couldn't even rest. Couldn't even rest it on. Uh, check it. Was he well alive? I'm afraid not. If he hadn't got up and walked out, couldn't have done it. But that's not, that wasn't Mitchell, that wasn't me, but it could have been, right. it could have been Brother Dan. That's right. It could have been Sister Liz Benner. She knows what it is. Hallelujah. What are you saying, Brother Wall? I'm trying to warn you this morning. If you ain't ready to meet God, you need to clean your life up and you need to get ready to meet God. You don't need to walk out of here. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you walk out of here today, you can't say Brother Wall didn't stand up there and tell me about it. What do you, where's it at? What do you do with it? Well, listen, listen, now see if this fits you. Well, I'm a pretty good person. You know, I do it, don't do very much mean. Well, maybe a little bit aggravating. I'll tell you what you better do. You better quit, get out of your self righteousness and get in and repent of your sins and let God take over your life and your heart and your soul and quit making excuses why you're not serving the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, it, it, it's, this has always amazed me since I've been preaching. People will <laughs> say, well, Brother Walt, I'm not, I'm not really living for the Lord. I'm just sort of straddled the fence. And every time they fall off of the fence, they fall on the devil's side. <laughs> then you shall wonder what's wrong. How did the word you hide it at? Now let me let me tell you all something. My my granddaddy, my my dad's dad wasn't a Christian until he was eighty-six years old. And my grandmother was, they both got saved. She was 80, uh, well, she was, uh, well, they were 85. He, he was 85 and she was 86. They didn't live very long after, after that. And they died at 86. But anyhow, my brother was preaching. And God come into their life and saved them. But my, my granddaddy, he had a bad, he had a problem. He liked to drink. He liked moonshine. I was just a young boy, but he said to me, here, take this, take this dollar down there, bring me back a half a pint of liquor. Now don't you tell your grandma. I spoke been there to help him take care of him. And I was, I'd take care of me. She had he had some she had some under the mattress that She'd give him a swallow twice a day, according to the doctors. Mm -hmm. But I went over and, and helped, helped my granddaddy out. I went to Faye Dunes. I went and got him, let him have a pint, took it back. I made his pint, I don't know which dollar's worth anyway. I put it under my coat and brought it back and took it to my granddaddy and gave it to him. I wasn't a Christian. I didn't care how much he drank, it didn't make me any difference. But he had enough hit, he just kept drinking it. That little bit of stuff that grandma was giving him along with it, but how to do it, but he, he just kept drinking it. Till he, he got he got drunk. And he had, my grandmother came in there and said, they called him Pulley, said, Pulley, you're drunk. Now I'm not giving you enough. If you drink all that, what pour is that? What's that? What did I do? She went to there and got hers that she was getting a drink out of her bed. But she knew just as quick as she got that, she knew he got some from somewhere else. She knew I had been missing for a while too that day. See, it all was put together. You know what she done? She's an old Indian woman. She turned around to me and said, 
to me, you'll pay for this. I'll hope you for the days come. Did you tell Grandma you went and got it? No, I didn't. And I didn't tell her I didn't go get it, because if I tell her a lie, she'd put me anyway. But you know what I done? I went home. <laughs> I ain't been back yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, why didn't you? Because Grandma was a woman of her word. She said, I'm going to whoop you. She whooped you and took a week to get you. What did, she said, what did, I, what did I do with that? I didn't know anything about it. Come on now. Think about it. Well, what did you do it for? Because cause my granddaddy told me to, and I like my granddaddy. Hallelujah. And grandma wasn't supposed to know anything about it. But let me tell you something. When you sin, it's written all over you. Everybody knows that grandpa had been drinking. Hallelujah. Whatever I brought him, he was drinking it because he's already got, he'd already got drunk on it. Big tongued and talking every kind of way. Hallelujah. See, what do you say? You may think, well, I'm... I'm, I, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Hey, do you think this world is ignorant? Do you think that God's people are ignorant? They know that where you're at. God will reveal it. What'd you do with it? What'd you do with that salvation that God gave you? Why come you? How come you to lay it down? Hallelujah. Not keep your heart tuned with God. It's time that you turned it all over to God and let God have it all. Praise the Lord. And got saved. Give your heart to God. Quit sinning. Get out of the bitch in it. Hallelujah. I open the walls. You know how it is. I... Now I know how it is. You don't want to serve the Lord. If you do, you'll serve. If you don't want to, you won't. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you come this morning. Be back tonight. I want you to think. If you've got sin in your life, it'll all come out. And it'll hurt everybody. It'll hurt your family. It'll hurt you. It'll hurt everybody around you. Praise the Lord. And whenever you, whenever you do... You can look at and say, God, you told me, but you can't say what. Well, somebody else calls and I sing it. I hear people, you know, I hear people saying, well, if, I, if it wasn't for my wife, it wasn't my husband. If it wasn't for this or it wasn't for somebody else, everybody blames everything on somebody else. Nobody can make you do what you don't want to do. Hallelujah. God's a wonderful name. Amen. I appreciate the Lord today. Appreciate everybody being back this morning.